Gorgo. Just like with every other country in the world, everyone needed their own giant monster. The US had Kong, Japan had Godzilla, so it only made perfect sense that the British needed a giant monster movie as well. So, in 1961, Eugene Lowry, who was actually the man that directed The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, as well as some of the lesser-known monster movies of that era, like The Giant Behemoth and Colossus of New York, brought Gorgo to the big screen. Interestingly enough, Gorgo premiered in Japan almost a year before it was ever shown in Britain. So, a group of salvagers working off the coast of Ireland get lambasted by a volcanic eruption that not only wrecks their ship, but also unearths some really disgusting-looking mutant fish things. I've never seen anything like that before. Oh, no, come on, man. Don't touch that with your bare hands. You're gonna start growing a ball sack out of your palm or some weird shit. These are the last few barrels coming on board now. Drop you back to work. Ew, a child. Get away from me, you filthy vermin. Get it away. But it wasn't just a bunch of bug-eyed fish that came up from that eruption. Oh, hey, guys, what's going Oh, God, oh, God, my fucking eye. I mean, yeah, I'd be pretty pissed, too, if I was just minding my own business and then some asshole threw a sharp object into my retina. So, yeah, this is Gorgo. I mean, it isn't the most original looking design out there. He's basically just a dinosaur with fins on his head, but it's not bad looking. I quite like the glowing red eyes though. They're very menacing. Oh no, my only weakness. Don't mind the fact that I'm a giant monster that doesn't get phased by getting stabbed in the eyeball or shot, but fire? Nah, fuck that. So after its initial attack, the salvagers decide to pull a Carl Denim and capture the damn thing alive. To call this plot point a blatant copy of King Kong's plot is a total understatement. I mean, they even called the goddamn thing the eighth wonder of the world. Subtle. It's super hard to concentrate on this scene when that wire in the background keeps phasing in and out of the quantum realm. So before they can stick it on display, they have to parade it through London. There's something about these shots that look weird to me. Like it almost feels like this is home video footage of them just driving the prop through downtown to try and build hype for the movie. I know that isn't what they did because apparently they shot this as early as possible so no one was wandering the streets, but wouldn't that have been cool? I mean, you're just going about your day when suddenly a giant monster drives past you in a semi? That'd be awesome. It was like a missed opportunity. As you were probably expecting, the thing gets loose while they're trying to transport it. Go, Gorgo! You're free! You no longer have to be their monetary puppet! Oh. Oh. So you're just, you're just gonna wander into your cage anyway. All the directions you could have gone? Uh, uh, you dumb bastard. At this point, I was thinking to myself, okay, so it's gonna get put on display, it's gonna break loose, wreck havoc, probably die. Really, I was expecting them to go the complete King Kong route, but they don't. Uh-oh, turns out the Gorgo they captured was just a wee little baby. And the mom is pissed. This is where the movie starts getting good. The moment the mom shows up. So the mama Gorgo makes her way into London, and we get probably one of the funniest things I've seen in quite a while. So a couple of greasers come down to the bay to get a closer look. <laughs> wow, wow, it's like the fire's coming right at me. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so hilarious. I just love it when passerbys who just like have to get involved just end up dying for no reason. It's fucking funny. And now we get the giant monster movie that Gorgo is supposed to be. The military shows up to fight Gorgo, Gorgo is unfazed by any of it, and just pretty much wrecks house. The miniature work here is actually pretty damn solid. I'm used to so many of these older monster movies just having total ass suckage level of miniatures, but this stuff's pretty damn good. Actually, the director of the movie didn't want any scenes with the military fighting Gorgo in the movie at all. But alas, the producer always wins. You can't take the military out of giant monster movies. It's tradition, it has to be there. But apparently the director ended up getting a print of the film and cut out all the military stuff for his own personal copy. That's kind of weird, but I mean, hey, man, he's the director. Some of the shots here are genuinely really great. A key example is when Gorgo is approaching Big Ben. I mean, the way the camera's pulled back, showing off the glowing red sky and Gorgo's size in comparison to Big Ben. Framing like this rarely appeared in those older movies. And I mean, the shot of Gorgo walking towards Town Square. I mean, come on, that's, that's awesome. I mean, the Coca-Cola product placement is pretty blatant, but that's still pretty awesome. So, after all this destruction, after all the countless loss of human lives from this rampaging behemoth of mayhem, how does the movie end? Well, it just kind of does. The mom frees the baby and they wander off into the sea. No big final battle, no monster getting gunned down. Just some dialogue that clearly isn't in any way supposed to be Raymond Burr's character from the Americanized original Godzilla movie. No way. Yet... As though disdaining the pygmies under her feet, she turns back. 
returns with her young, leaving the prostrate city, leaving the haunts of man, and leaving man himself to ponder the proud boast. It really seemed like they just didn't know how to end movies in the 60s. So, there you have it. There's 1961's Gorgo. It doesn't do anything new for the giant monster genre, and there's plenty of far better movies out there. And it's pretty much just a British King Kong with some Godzilla and Gamera tossed in for good measure. But for what it is, it is entertaining, and I've sat through far worse shit in my life. 